Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship at Grace Lutheran Church. It is a great and exciting day for us and for the kingdom here at Grace. Uh, Today, we have uh, before us not only uh, the iconic eternal story of Jesus' baptism, which reminds us of God stopping time and space to claim us as his own, but we have First Communion for uh, six of the young people of this congregation, and so it is a celebratory, exciting day for them and their families as they, for the very first time, get to step into the next sacrament where the Lord again stops time and space and lets us into a sliver of the kingdom, forgiving sins, refreshing faith. It's a marvelous, exciting day here at Grace for all of us. So that is obviously our theme for today. A couple of announcements as we get started. First of all, uh, I will be at a conference this week, so there's no Wednesday Bible class again. But then next week, we'll start in uh, fresh and go right through Lent, uh, looking at the Book of Romans. It'll it'll be a great, great time. So hopefully starting next Wednesday, uh, you can join me for that. Uh, Patrice, you have a Board of Finance announcement. contribution statements so I will be out there after church so if you don't have it already plus please come see me please don't offend it if on the spot I don't remember your last name it's a little embarrassing but just walk up and tell me your last name and I'll get it to you right away thank you thanks Patrice thanks uh, Board of Finance that's been hard at work at all of that Um, are there any other announcements from boards committees events anything like that for right now Okay, seeing none, uh, today our service is going to go pretty typically as it normally would with a couple of hiccups stuck in for uh, enrollment of confirmation sponsors and for First Communion. If you are new to Grace, we, uh, we put First Communion in the first year of confirmation. We also um, do something called confirmation sponsors, which is something that uh, is, is really important to me. And the idea is, if you haven't heard about it before, you get sponsors or godparents at your baptism that take vows to uh, be with you and support you as you grow up learning the faith until you make it your own. And sometimes those sponsors, those godparents, are in North Dakota or California or, uh, you know, unreachable. And, And so they need a hand. And so I like to bring in a person from the congregation that's right here that can get to know our students, encourage them, and uh, kind of take the baton for a while from those baptismal sponsors and be an important part of that formative time. So that's what we're doing um, in that part of the service, and you will see that uh, printed for you in the bulletin. 
Now, with all that explained and with the, uh, the exciting theme of the day on our hearts and minds, there's no reason to delay. Would you please join me in standing to sing our opening song? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Please kneel or be seated for a time of confession. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are made. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, 
and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand to share the peace and joy of that forgiveness with one another.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 42. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his law. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name, my glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. This is the word of the Lord. Be, the epistle lesson is from Romans, the sixth chapter. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Were we buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life? For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, 
with whom I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I now invite the children to come forward for the children's message. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You want to try again? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, that was terrific. Lachlan, you led the show there. That was nice. Okay. <clears throat> Who knows how to cross the street? Anybody know how to cross the street safely? Who's learned to do that? Do you know? You going to lead us, Cameron? Can you tell me about it? Wait, come up, come up here with me. All right, let's pretend that this aisle is the street, okay? And we're on the sidewalk right here. Okay. okay. Um, let's see. Who do you want to show how to cross the street? Pick somebody. Um, you want Ava? You want to stay with your side? Liam? Yeah. Liam, can you come here? Thanks, man. Just stand right here. Cameron's going to show you about crossing the street. You're going to do it together. What's the first step if you're going to cross the street that's right here? You look both ways. Okay. Show us how it's done. You always step in the street first? Is that the first step? No. Okay, so if this is the street, the aisle, you, boom, boom. You're getting hit by cars, man. Okay, so what's the first thing you do? So you look both ways. Okay. And then if there's no more cars, then you go. Okay, so which way do you look first usually? Both. So you do you know? That way and then that way. Okay, okay, that's fine. So. Cross over to me with Liam. Show me how that's done. Well, you didn't look at all that time, so let's not get hit by cars. Let's come back. Come back here. Safely on the sidewalk. That's good. Okay. All right. Show me how it's done. I, I guess you kind of look. That's good. Um, we'll hope for the best. You guys can sit down. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> now, why do we have to learn especially to cross the street? Why is that important? You. You'll show me? You want to? You can. You can. That's cool. We can all learn from that. How is it done? Both ways. Okay. And how does that work? Can you show us? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Very nice, very nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, why is that an important thing to learn? Yes, ma'am. Because you can easily get hit by cars. Oh, and what would that, what, what would happen then? Then you would have to go to the hospital. Yeah. Sometimes in life, when something really good happens or something really bad happens, it changes everything. It stops things. Now, today, Jesus tells us, or shows us through his baptism, that our baptism is kind of like that, in the complete opposite way. That something really good happens and God stops things and claims you as his own, makes you part of the family. So, all of a sudden, we're God's child as soon as the water touches our heads. And it's something that stops everything and God reaches into the world and makes you his child. Pretty cool? Yeah, thanks, Lachlan. Let's pray about it. Dear Jesus, thank you for my baptism and making me your child. Help me to never forget you're with me every day. In your name, amen. Thanks for coming up, guys. You can go back to your pews and your families, and we continue with the hymn of the day.
Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus' words to John the Baptist's objections from our gospel lesson this morning. It is fitting to fulfill all righteousness. So far, our text. A handful of years ago, I was on a plane. And <clears throat> I'll tell you, when I'm on a plane, I don't love making friends with everyone that sits next to me. I like to take naps, I like to be in my own little world, I like to read, I like to write, things like that. And I haven't always been this way. I became this way because of this one specific day. I was on a plane going to I don't remember where, and I was sitting next to a lady who loved to tell stories. And it was kind of fun. It was like I was meeting my airline grandmother or something like that. And she was telling me stories and we were talking for some time and then finally she told me what her travel was all about. She was on her way to where I can't remember we were going for a family baptism, which was very nice. And she remarked just on her own that uh, it was a Lutheran church where the baby was being baptized and I thought that was pretty neat. And she said right away though, again knowing nothing, but don't worry, it's not a Missouri Lutheran church. She says, <laughs> I know how those Missouri Lutherans are with their rigid pastors. That's what she said. <laughs> Sometime later, the stories kind of stopped and she said, where are my manners? Pardon me. What is it that you do? <laughs> um, and I said something like, I, I guess I'm one of those rigid guys. I probably don't have to tell you any more to say that was about the end of the conversation. The stories halted there, and uh, this became, because of that spot, a very memorable occasion for me. This was a stopping point. This was a place where it felt like the world was standing still in awkwardness, and I'm still able to recount it to you today because of that. When we look at our text today, the baptism of Jesus, it's one of those neat, really neat gospel lessons where the gospels kind of work in tandem really well to give us a lot of details to paint the picture of what happened there on that given day at the Jordan River. Now, I, I want to start with what the Gospel of Luke says. I think it's really interesting as far as painting the picture. It says, Then everyone went out to be baptized, and Jesus was also baptized. Isn't that a little interesting? That Jesus is the tack on at the end, everyone's being baptized, and oh yeah, Jesus too. Now, <clears throat> Christians throughout time have loved to paint pictures of this point where Jesus' life and ministry sort of stood still, where the Christian church takes a pivot, where your life and mine gets new direction. And some of my favorites are, Really early Christian authors used to like to write that when God the Father speaks from heaven and the Holy Spirit's descending like a dove, that it was bright with the light of like the transfiguration, that lightning white kind of glow. I, I think that's kind of neat. Uh, Jerome, uh, early Christian scholar, he wrote that he liked to think about it like as Jesus walked down to the river, there was a mighty fire that surrounded him and blazed across the river as he was baptized. I like that one. That sounds powerful and neat. And he knew that he was sort of uh, adding his own details into the story. <clears throat> but regardless, this is one of those moments when we write these things and we get excited about these things because something really significant happened here. And it grabs our attention. So back to that Luke, and everyone went out to be baptized, and Jesus was also baptized. If we think about everyone being baptized, and the baptizing was done by John, one guy, that's a long line, right? Now, all of a sudden, this majestic, blazing fire, bright light occasion is a hot, sticky, sweaty, desert mess with an eternity-long line that feels like it never moves. That changes the picture a little bit, doesn't it? Now, if we want to know who everybody is referring to, the Gospels give us some uh, wonderful clues to that as well. 
It says things like uh, the tax collectors were there and the harlots were there, so the, the sinners, if you will, in the text. It tells us that uh, there were soldiers there. It tells us that Pharisees were there, so the clergy was there along with the, the sinners. There were kind of day laborers and poor people. There were the wealthy people. There were Jews. There were Gentiles. In short, everyone went out to be baptized. So, back to that line. Now, if we're thinking about this hot, sticky line, <clears throat> we're already thinking about something that oh, we just don't like to think about, we don't like to deal with. My grandpa used to say, never stand in line to give some place your business. I actually was with him one time at a Publix where we put a loaf of bread back and went to Winn-Dixie because we were not waiting in a line that long for that loaf of bread. He meant that. We don't like lines in any capacity, and living here, that's uh, pretty difficult. <laughs> but if we look at the line to be baptized that day in the Jordan, it was something like, you know, uh, soldier, next, dunk, uh, tax collector, next, dunk, uh, stone cutter, next, dunk, and on, and on, and on. And so in that midst of next, 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 all of a sudden, our text today, our text in Matthew tells us Jesus is at the front of the line. And the next, next becomes stop. John stops his line. He stops his momentum at that moment. He stops cold. He doesn't want to do this baptism. Everyone came out to be baptized, and John happily, gladly, willingly was fulfilling his vocational role, baptizing them all. Then it's Jesus' turn, and he doesn't want to do it. He's intimidated. He's scared. He says, you should be the one baptizing me. That's what he says. And I think there's a little bit of humanity that we can really understand right there with John. God had a plan, God had a purpose for this day. And it was this exact moment. And John's objection, his humanity, his feelings of inferiority is what was getting in the way. And so this is kind of like any time that God gives us an opportunity to serve in the kingdom and we jump out of the way or we get in the way, that kind of thing. So this is, you're walking the dog and you see the neighbor needs a hand and you quickly notice the tree on the other side of the street uh, for a little while, just long enough to get past. And then you get to the corner and it kind of hits you. That's where the world stops. That's where you realize just for a moment what you could have done, what you didn't do in that moment. This is where you're with a friend or an acquaintance and you know kind of in the moment that the thing would really be to offer a prayer, to pray with them, to point them to the Lord and for some reason you just can't get the gumption, the courage up to do it. And then when you're laying in bed that night you're thinking through some things and the world stops and it hits you what you could have done, the opportunity that God put in your path and it didn't work. This is, you're doing anything, you're, you're daily normal things, you're on the phone, the phone conversation gets a little frustrated, you say some things that you really didn't mean to say, you don't normally say, but then as soon as you get off the phone you realize the kids, the grandkids are right there and they heard it and the world stops and it hits you. Your vocation as parent, as grandparent, well, I took a back seat for a second there. We do all kinds of things at different times that God's plans would have dictated otherwise. But in this case, Jesus has something to say about that. Jesus says that John must baptize him to fulfill all righteousness. Now think about that. It doesn't say for my righteousness, it doesn't say for your righteousness, it doesn't say for this righteousness or today's righteousness. All righteousness, all of it. Do you realize what, what that's saying? That means your righteousness too and mine. 
Our relationship with God, founded in that example of baptism that started right on that day, is fulfilled for all time and all place for all eternity, starting right there in the Jordan River with that reluctant John the Baptist and that long, sticky line. So then John does baptize Jesus. And it's one of those marvelous, time-stopping, for a good reason moments. The world stops. God the Father speaks. The Spirit descends like a dove would. It's amazing. And you know what else it is? It's exactly what happens to us when we encounter the sacraments. So when we are baptized, right here or a place kind of like this, God reaches into your life and stops things and changes things and claims you. And when you're baptized right here, God has something to say about that. The Spirit descends on you. Your faith is planted and flourishes. Your sins are forgiven. And you are claimed by God forever. That changes things. And you know what else? Normally, when we see something significant in the life or the ministry of Jesus, it's often on a significant day. The Sabbath, the Passover, there's, there's holidays that surround a lot of the major events of Jesus' life. Not this one. We have no idea what day this was. No idea. We know he was probably about 30, his ministry is getting started. And what that says is, the significance of the day is the baptism. That's what makes the day. So in your life, your baptism makes your life different. That day is significant amongst your whole life. So even if you're looking back and your baptism is so far in the rearview mirror, it's getting a little blurry back there. You can still say, on this day, I am claimed and loved and redeemed by God and I am baptized. And those promises are yours and nothing can take that away. You know, for me, uh, that was April 29th, 1986, that insignificant Sunday morning where my mom lugged her 12-pound infant up towards the altar at uh, Benediction Lutheran in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I hope Dad was helping out. But uh, it was just an ordinary day, and it changed my life forever. God stopped time and space and reached into my life and claimed me, and every single one of you has an experience, a story just like that. So today's First Communion, where we see the same time, eternity, stopping experience happen right here. Where our youth of our congregation are about to experience for the very first time God stopping time and space and inviting you into eternity. You are welcomed into his story, the narrative of his sacrifice, your eternity. You're standing shoulder to shoulder with the angels, the archangels, all the company of heaven, all the saints that have gone on before us to glory. That's all there. And your sins are forgiven. And your faith is refreshed and built up. And all these things happen as you, he invites you to the table. And every time he invites you, it happens all over again. So, <clears throat> let's say you missed some opportunities lately. You walked past the neighbor, you didn't say the prayer when you could, you lost your cool. With this text on this day, Jesus is reminding you that in your baptism, you can remember every moment of every day that his message to you is this is my child with whom I am well pleased. His message to you today is that in Jesus' baptism, fulfilled in your baptism, all righteousness has been fulfilled. You and God are one. Your relationship is strong and standing and eternal. And it all happens on this day. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which certainly surpasses understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen.
please stand. This morning we confess our faith in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit with the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess together, I believe... This morning we pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the Holy Christian Church, here and scattered throughout the world, for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this nation, for our cities and communities, our leaders and the military who protect us, including Renee, Jesse, Michael, Abby, Derek, Dan, James, Michael, Stephen, Tim, Jonathan, Paul, Chandler, Stephen, Randall, Stephen, Evan, Leif, Paul, and Nathan. And for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the sick and for all those who care for them, including and especially remembering Jimmy, Dawn, Jerry, Gail, Carol, Eris, Janice, Louise, Bonnie, Norma, George, Linda, Rosemary, David, Rick, Donnie, Patty, John, Lori, Joe, and Cassie. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the family and friends of Cheryl, that they would continually be comforted with the hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those receiving First Communion this day, that they would see the forgiveness, life, and salvation lived out through them in the body and blood of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Amen. Please be seated.
Now I would like to invite all of the confirmation students receiving a confirmation sponsor for the first time and those sponsors to please join me in front of the altar. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, from ancient times the Church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction, and nurture in the Christian faith and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Sponsors, I now ask you, is it your intention to serve as sponsors in the Christian faith? Yes, yes with the help of God. God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace fulfill what we are enabled to do. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, grant your blessing upon these faithful Christians who have pledged themselves to these catechumens as sponsors in holy baptism and catechesis. Pour upon them your word and spirit, that they may faithfully confess the faith to them, support and encourage them in their instruction and nurture, and pray for them that they might not fall away from Christ. Enable these sponsors to be examples of prayer and faithfulness in hearing the word of God, receiving the sacraments, confessing sin, and living by faith in Christ's forgiveness with love toward others. Grant that their catechumens might learn from them to suffer under the cross of persecution and affliction with steadfastness, patience, and joy to the glory of the only true God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. Okay, would uh, all the rest of the First Communion families and students come forward now at this time? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be crowded. That's okay. All right. Beloved in the Lord. In holy baptism, these young people were born again as God's children and received into his church. As a further gift of his love for us, our Lord Jesus Christ has given his church the sacrament of the altar and invites his children to receive this sacrament in faith for the forgiveness of their sins. The Apostle Paul reminds us, let a person examine himself and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. And as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. These candidates have received instruction and have been examined by the pastor regarding their sin and their understanding of the sacrament of the altar. Candidates, you are about to be admitted to the Lord's table. Holy Scripture de describes the life of the church and every baptized Christian with these words. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. You are invited by our Lord to come regularly to hear his word and receive his sacrament. You will continue to be instructed and nurtured in the Christian faith and life. You are invited to confess your sins and receive the comfort of holy absolution. All this will help you live as the child of God that you have been made through holy baptism. In testimony of this faith and this confession, I now ask you, students, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? Do you believe that Jesus Christ, true God and true man, is your Lord? Do you believe that you are a sinner? Do you believe that Jesus Christ died for you and shed his blood for you on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins? Do you believe that in the Lord's Supper, he gives you his true body and blood for the forgiveness of all of your sins and to strengthen your faith in him and your love toward others? 
Do you intend to continue to hear and receive the instruction of your Lord, confess your sins, and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully throughout your life? I therefore invite you all to the Lord's Supper to receive Christ's precious body and blood for the forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Parents, sponsors, and all members of the congregation, the whole church shares with you the responsibility and concern for the ongoing instruction and spiritual care of these young people. I now ask you, will you intercede for them in prayer? And as much as you are able, give them your counsel and aid, that in communion with the church they may grow up to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of Jesus Christ? Then answer, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. Will the congregation please stand for prayer? <laughs> Heavenly Father, whose Son, Jesus Christ, loved the young and called them to himself, we ask you to bless these young people, strengthen them in the faith through the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, so that they may grow spiritually and bring forth the fruits of faith in a life of love toward others, to the praise and honor of your holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We rejoice with thankful hearts in your confession of faith. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his holy supper, he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen. You can return to your pews, but just for a minute, and the congregation remains standing. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from the, before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy And our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
please stand. Now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you steadfast in the one true faith to life everlasting, to pardon his joy and his peace. Amen. We pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Go in peace and serve the Lord.